I'm Adam Moss, and this is Moss Models. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. This isn't any ethos content. It does have bearing on the FreeSky ecosystem, and we will be using one piece of FreeSky hardware, the servo channel changer. But today we're going to go over how to prep a couple of Futaba Universal servos for use on SBUS in FreeSky. Now I've got two servos here, and they're actually going into two different airplanes. This SU-301, uh, this is a high voltage standard servo with SBUS and SBUS2 compatibility. It supports the SBUS16 protocol from the FreeSky perspective. FreeSky can do 24 channels on SBUS, which is SBUS24, or 16 channels on SBUS with Futaba compatibility, which is SBUS16. As these are Futaba servos, we need the Futaba compatibility, so we'll be running SBUS 16. Now, this is going as the throttle servo in my Escapade 61, which is going to have an RB35S, two TDMXs, and a full set of SBUS servos. It's actually got SU400s on every surface, um, and it's getting the 301 in the, on the throttle. The reason for the 301 on the throttle is simple. The throttle doesn't need 100 ounce inches of torque, so it's getting the cheaper servo. Now this one, it's a 0.18 second servo at 6.6 .6 volts, 0.16 at 7.4, with 48.6 ounce inches of torque at 6.6 .6 volts, or 54.2 at 7.4 volts. That's going to be an all HV setup, so uh, it's more than enough. This is a great replacement for high voltage applications. If you're looking at an aircraft that would normally take your standard analog servo, this is a drop-in replacement, uh, and you can run 2S LiPo, 2S LiFi, and it's happy all day long. Um, there's also a lower end version uh, called the SU300, basically the same specs, but not high voltage. So if you're just swapping out S148s, HS422s, something like that, uh, you can drop the SU300, get SBUS, get all the benefits of a modern digital servo for the price of an analog. And an SU300 costs about the same price as an S148, which is the servo it replaces. The 301's a little bit more. They're about, uh, I think they're 25 American. They're about 35 Canadian. And the 400, which I love, this thing is 34 bucks American, it's 45 bucks Canadian, 44, 45 bucks. And it's, again, 6.6 .6 and 7.4 volt rated, 0.14 seconds at 6.6, .6, at 7.4. It's 98.6 ounce inches at 6.6 .6 volts. And at 7.4, it's 109.7 ounce inches of torque. I have these on the Escapade across the board for every surface. And this is actually going into my Valiant as the new aileron servos. I put a pair of these on ailerons. I've already installed one um, and I'm going to install this one next. And I put a pair of 645 MGs on the flaps on that. Now I could have just put the SU400s on the flaps, but I'd bought two 645 MGs to test because there were some challenges with them and tandem with a lot of servo buzz, a lot of servo jitter. They were really unusable with tandem receivers until the last firmware update. Uh, 645 MGs don't like full power telemetry from tandem on the 900 meg. There is now a 25 milliwatt telemetry setting on the 900 meg that's introduced with the last batch of firmware updates for the tandem receivers. That'll make your 645 MGs happy. And so now that they're happy, my Valiant just got a TDR10 replacing the SR8 Pro and it's getting the 645 MGs, as I noted, on flaps, the SU400s on the ailerons, and I have a couple of OMG digital servos on the tail, which I've actually been pretty impressed by. They're nice servos. I just, you know, for the extra 10 bucks or so, uh, I'm going with the Futabas long-term. Not unhappy with the OMGs at all. Um, and I've got a... Um, an old uh, JR NES 506 or 507 on throttle for that, uh, just straight out of the junk bin. It works, it, it's reliable, and that's all you need for throttle on a glow engine aircraft. So, getting to the video, 
We've got these two servos. We've got a servo ch channel changer, and this is necessary to set the channel that these listen on when they're running in S-Bus mode. And they do auto-detect S-Bus or PWM on power up. They also auto-detect S-Bus too, but we're not for tablet guys, so we're not gonna ever use that. Um, but when they're in S-Bus mode, they have to be told what channel to list on. By default, they come out of the box on channel one. Now, in that particular case, I've already done the left wing servo for the Valiant because conveniently it's on channel one. So I didn't have to do any programming. So we're gonna get, we're gonna start with the 301. I'm just gonna pop it out. And it comes with a package. Here's all your mount hardware and your servo horns. There's a little, little sticker pack. So that's actually new. So you can put what channel you put it on. I don't even bother with that. And I think there's a manual in there. I'm not, oh yeah, there's the little manual. There's your servo. It's got, a, it's got the, the small round uh, servo horn already mounted. So it's ready to go if you're putting it in a aileron on a traditional glow or if you are um, putting it somewhere else, you've got all your standard servo horns and your mount hardware. Now we're just gonna take this and we're gonna plug in my battery and this is a Protec Lifey, 6.6 .6 volt. And powers up. Now let's plug the servo in. And you can go and you can see here, I'm just gonna zoom in, let's see. Now you can see there at the top, it's on servos on channel one. If I click set, it'll set it to channel four, but that's not what we want. So we're gonna go here and, okay, two, three. So you can see I selected set to channel three, went back, highlighted set and it's now showing up as channel three. I always use AETR for my setups. Uh, there's only one reason. I used to be a JR guy. I used to use this is a JR Spectrum style TAER for everything. But the, when I start, the SR series receivers require AETR. So I've just moved everything to AETR as I set it up so that that way I don't have to worry if I want to drop an SR series receiver in. Um, I can just go, go ahead, drop that right in and uh, it'll work. So, uh, getting back, we've now set channel three and you can see you can disconnect, power off, power on. You can see there's the double dash. It's not getting anything from the servo, plug it in and there's channel three. Now, We'll just go do the same thing for the SU400. Like you can see, it comes out, looks basically the same, except for the, uh, for this. And these are not Metal Gear servos, just to be clear. These are composite gear servo. I actually do prefer composite gear servos for most uses. They wear slower, they last longer. The key piece is use a Metal Gear servo for anything that's gonna be taking big hits or big loads. Uh, they will take that better than a composite geared servo. If you don't have that requirement, a composite gear servo wears slower and lasts longer. So unless you're putting heavy loads, like anything, if you're getting up to the 150 plus ounce inch range, at that point, you're putting so much load on it, you really need metal gear. But for these 100 ounce inch and lighter servos, unless you're putting big loads on it, like flap servos in particular, especially on sailplanes, you don't need metal gear. Nose gear servos. There's a good one for Metal Gear. Tail, if you've got a servo for your nose gear steering, that's gonna take a bunch of hits when you land. Put a Metal Gear servo on it. Understand you're gonna wear it out. You're probably gonna have to buy another one in five years. But your elevator, your ailerons, your rudder, unless you got a tail wheel, those are all fine with uh, composite gears. So we're just gonna take this one, plug it in. And you can see it just reset to channel one. And we're gonna go back here, click. And this one is going to up to channel five and set. And voila, we have now set 
these two servos up so that they can be installed in the aircraft. Pretty simple, pretty fast. The only downside is you do need one of these servo channel changer widgets. They can be a touch hard to find. So keep an eye out at your favorite FreeSky retailer for them to come in and grab one when you can. Uh, they are also used to set 